Okay, now let's talk about the general weighted residual method. Uh, the weighted residual method, as we just said, uh, wants to reduce the residue uh, over the domain. Uh, uh, the residue in general is a function of x, as we've explained earlier. Uh, uh, the reduction of the residue will probably produce an accurate outcome. Uh, however, general numerical methods uh, tend to uh, see creating a system of uh, system of linear equations that's solvable in some unknown coefficients. Uh, when getting those uh, coefficients, either they are the solution of uh, the equation, like in um, discrete methods uh, and the finite element, of course, uh, or uh, they are used as coefficients, as we uh, explained in the series solution we introduced earlier. So uh, our uh, our aim will be finding those coefficients uh, that when uh, in, uh, when we integrate the residue on the domain or a part of the domain, uh, we end up with zero residue. Of course, integrating the residue to produce zero is not equivalent at all to having residue that's equal to zero all over the domain. Again, let me remind you, having a residue that's equal to zero all over the domain means that we got the exact solution which is something we are not expecting. If we got it by chance, it's fine. If not, then this is not what we're seeking at all. So when we integrate uh, the residue and force it, force it to be equal to zero, uh, we get um, some coefficients that will uh, result in some parts of the domain, the residue is positive, other parts of the domain, the residue is negative, so, okay, the more uh, the, these parts are there, the less uh, residue we expect all over the domain. Uh, I hope this idea is clear because this is the focus of all weighted residual methods. So let's imagine now that we expand the series uh, in which we have n unknown variables, ai. Uh, these variables, now if we integrate uh, the residue all over the domain, we are actually integrating the functions size of x minus, uh, under the operator of course, minus g of x uh, over the domain, and then we force it to be equal to zero. Uh, this forcing is all uh, what all the uh, weight residual methods are uh, about. Uh, however, if we just integrate equal to zero, we get a single uh, equation uh, and that's not sufficient of course unless we have uh, only a single approximate uh, function psi uh, but for more than one this will not be uh, sufficient now imagine that when we are multiply when we are integrating the residue we just are multiplying it here by one what if we change this one and add another function any function any function. Let's now call it w of uh, x. This function of x uh, in the previous uh, equation was 1. Now it can be just x, x squared, maybe sine x, maybe uh, len x, maybe whatever. We'll see that we don't need complex functions at all, just very simple functions that are linearly independent. That's all what we need, that these wj's need to be linearly independent. If you use 10 of them, none of the 10 uh, can be produced linearly from the other. That's the condition we are seeking. Now, if we uh, uh, multiply Wj by the residue and integrate over the domain, we get an equation. If we repeat this n times, remember, we have n unknown variables. Now, if we repeat this n times, each time we are going to uh, produce an equation. If these equations are produced using linearly independent Wj's, these equations are going to be linearly independent, which is the precondition for creating a system of linear equations. Now, the linear equations are subject, uh, have the AIs as their unknown variables. After integrating, remember, after integrating dx 
function of x dx, we get just a number, just a number, 5, 13, 12.85 through a 2, whatever. So you end up with a system of linear equations that is going to be solved in most conditions un unless you are very unlucky in selecting your uh, functions.